It actually happened. At long last, a year and a half later, we finally get to watch All Stars 4. Cara Maria's true return. Rachel's back in better than ever. So many people who have been so sorely missed back in a challenge house competing for not nearly a big enough sum of money. Everyone gets their 60 seconds. Where are they now? Everyone gets to run up and down a hill on a hot summer day. Everyone gets to try and avoid talking to or about Nicole and Laurel in every Everyone gets to be confused by the format and the alliances that are opening the game. It's the challenge. All Stars 4 premiere episode. That's just episode one recap coming up right now. What up, my fellow challenge lovers? Welcome to The Challenge, a story where we dive deep into all things MTV's The Challenge, past, present, or future, what's happening in The Challenge universe. We are here to document it. I am your host and dedicated challenge historian, Jacob Hollaball. Thank you so very, very much for being here with me on what truly feels like a holiday, given how long we have waited. All Stars 4 is here. It has premiered. Technically, two episodes are out on Paramount+. Plus. We are here just to talk about the First, one at a time here. The episode two recap will be up not too long after this one. I will finish this pod, watch that episode. I have not watched yet. So this is episode one only, spoiler free of episode two or anything else covering that here in this. And yeah, it it really does feel like a holiday. I can't believe it's finally here. We've waited so long. It felt like it would almost never happen. And now it almost doesn't even feel real that, uh, that we're actually watching it. But watching it, we are. Thank you for being here with me on this Wednesday or whenever you are watching or listening. We're going to try to get into this quick. There is a lot to cover as with all premiere episodes. The agenda is as follows. We're going to do the biggest takeaways and storylines from the episode. Sometimes this will be a walk through the episode. Sometimes it won't be. Sometimes it's just the biggest takeaways, the biggest opinions, the biggest stories in this particular episode. It's going to be more the latter. Then we'll do some awards, best quote moment strategy. If there's strategy type awards to give out, and of course an episode MVP and then we will do some power rankings and wishes and predictions which in this first episode we will probably not do many wishes and predictions because we're literally going to press play on episode two right when we're done recording this podcast so not uh, not so much time maybe we'll just hit those power rankings and give some more time for everything else that's what we got coming up on this pod programming reminders for in the future again obviously episode two is also on Paramount Plus right now I will watch and record right after this I will post that. I'll I'll maybe at least wait till tomorrow morning to post that. But if you clicked on this thinking you were getting both episodes or you were getting episode two, that's a different one. Come back for those who maybe clicked on episode two thinking you were getting episode one. Welcome back into the fold. And then All Stars 4 recaps the rest of the season will be out typically middays, Wednesdays. Uh, The episodes go live in the early morning hours. I will get up, watch first thing, podcast, and those should be out midday Wednesdays, most weeks during All Stars 4. Survivor coverage is back this weekend with Tony. We missed last week, so we're doing a double episode covering the the limbo merge of last week's episode and tonight's episode uh, that will air by the time potentially you are listening to this, the actual merge itself. So Tony and I will be back this weekend covering Survivor. That's what you got coming up that's what you got today let's dive in all stars four so exciting so much fun so much to talk about here we go first high level thought to talk about just first reaction gut instinct watching the first episode now the expectations are through the freaking roof for this season and to some extent that meant they were through the roof for this first episode and so Not to start on a downer, not to make this sound like anything too drastic, but I will say I was underwhelmed by the first episode, and it's because I wish the first episode was just a full, where are they now, catching up with these people, leave the game for the rest of the show, leave it for episode two. Look, we've had a couple flagship seasons recently where they've done the quote-unquote episode zero where we just get to spend time, a full episode's worth, a full hour at the house, chatting with the people, seeing them all interact, basically just getting a full episode that is just night one, day one, day two type of content. And I really feel like we need that for all stars. And I really felt like this episode needed it. Okay. We do get the basically, I think 
almost all 24 of them get to like 30, 45, 60 second at most. Where are they now? The open, you know, the first confessional with them. Here's the flashback to the thing you might remember them for the most or the kind of storyline generally for them coming into this season, coming back into the franchise. And we got one of those with everyone. Everyone got a confessional or two. And by the end of the episode, I felt like, okay, we we literally waved hello to everyone. And only a, one or two people, I felt like we did anything more than wave hello to. And we were at the daily challenge 15 minutes in. 15 minutes into the episode, there's 24 people here I want to get back in touch with, get to know, catch up with, see what they're doing, see what they're up to, see how they all interact together, see what happens in a challenge house. And uh, yeah, so it was just way too fast into the game, way too fast. You know, just by the end of the episode, I felt like I needed an episode zero. I needed a launch special. I need in all seasons. And I feel like All Stars is just even more than a flagship or any other. I want the first episode to not include the game at all. I just want to see the people in the house. You don't have to, you know, it doesn't lengthen the amount of time the cast needs to be there. If anything, it incentivizes them to come because like you'll get guaranteed extra screen time. The first episode, like the first day is basically just filmed and turned into its own episode and everyone gets a bunch of screen time on the first episode. It, it, it makes it way more worth it for someone like, you know, Tyree who goes home by the end of this episode, whoever goes home second or third, you know, it would, it makes it more worth it for them. Doesn't lengthen the amount of time, anything like that. You can do this stuff over the course of a season and obviously they will, but if you give everyone this time up front, it also means that the rest of you could kind of more turn your focus to the present, to what's actually happening on this season for the rest of it. So I just really want that opening bit. I just thought I'd have more fun watching this opening episode because I, I guess I was just maybe wrongly anticipating too much of that. Like we barely, we barely get the Tina, Veronica, Rachel back together. They're like walk-in wasn't even a walk-in. No one really got a walk-in. Um, the whole thing, I just, I just thought I, I was a little underwhelmed with how the time we got to spend and how quickly it was just the game, the game, the game, and how quickly, you know, who won or was voted in or whatever dictated the few people we got to spend more than the one or two confessionals with for the game purposes. So a little underwhelmed, but that isn't to say I didn't love it. And that isn't to say there's a lot, obviously I still had a fantastic time and, uh, there's a lot more to discuss. The one storyline that we went in knowing we were going to get a lot of might be one of the dominant, if not the dominant storyline was the one storyline, the present moment, what's happening right now in the house storyline that they went back to multiple times. And that is Laurel and Nicole. And I think it's, I, I think it's going to suck. It's going to suck. Uh, there's, it's, there's going to be a lot of people who are potentially very entertained, buy it because it's going to be a mess, chaotic, just a huge, just, just mess is the only appropriate word. It feels like is for what's about to happen. Roller coaster feels the same, but roller coaster of trauma basically is, is the more appropriate way. This is the one thing that they really like the waiting a year and a half. Obviously it made a lot of fans upset. Like, where is this thing? But as we talked about in the preview and have even referenced at near the end of uh, B-Fank, like they did it for a reason and that reason made sense and they knew this is going to be so good and we want this to be the lead into season 40 and the whole other thing. But all of that was fine. There wasn't anything really ruined by it except for this one thing, which is that this storyline is botched. We know how this goes with Laurel and Nicole. We know how bad of a situation this was for Laurel to walk into what, we, we don't know exactly what goes down on the season uh, without, you know, those of us who stay spoiler free, but there's no spoilers from like following Laurel and Nicole to some degree, or just others who have been talking about this in the challenge sphere and knowing that these two do get back together and then not, and then together some to some degree are on again, off again throughout the season and immediately afterwards. And then it get goes really bad, really quickly again off the screen and they, it's just a horrific situation between the two now at present moment. And I feel bad for Laurel. Like this really is a situation she had finally pulled herself from. We briefly, I think, hear her say in this episode, or maybe it was in the trailer for the rest of the season or whatever of like, I finally got out of that situation that was really horrible for me, not just the person, but like the situation itself. And now here we are and like, it's, you know, for the cameras and everything else. and so. I don't think it's, I, I, I fear that she's not going to come off the best in this season, but that I'm going to have to remind myself over and over. Like this was a shit situation to put her in, 
for, you know, in theory for all of our entertainment. I don't think I'm going to be very entertained by it. Um, and yeah, it was the only storyline that got multiple moments of play. It's going to be a focal point of the season. And I just, I think I'm going to maybe not like it that much. So if I don't talk about it that much in, you know, future episode recaps where you're like, wait a minute, the, the, one of the main stories was this, and you barely touched on it in your recap. It's, it's cause I'm just not that interested overall. I just really, I'm really not. It's a car crash that we all we didn't see the car crash, but we heard about the car crash. We watched the the court proceedings play out about the car crash. We heard each person's version of the car crash 17 times and then 17 other people that weren't there or were there witnesses give their opinion. We, we've 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 know it all. And now we're going to go to go back a year and a half later and kind of relive the crash itself that we never actually got to see. We just saw everything immediately after. So it just feels weird. It feels icky. And I have long been a Laurel big time Laurel fan and defender. And I feel like it's a shit situation. And uh, I'm just, I don't know that it's going to be the part of the show that yes, messy chaos of old. I don't know if I'm going to love watching it though. Next topic of discussion has to be the format. Then the format that, is, is is a touch confusing still. We still have some open questions that I'm sure will be resolved. I actually think the currently open questions uh, are going to be resolved in the second episode. So it's the one thing that made me almost want to watch episode two before even recording the episode one recap. But I did not. I, I, I staved that off, got this recap going for you. So the format, as far as I understand it, is thus. There were the six stars that were given out, put into circulation, in the first daily challenge, just so that they're all in play from the get go, which we'll come back to brilliant. And after that, now it is just simply eliminated. They're not going to be a part of daily challenges in the future. It is now you win an elimination. You get to steal a star from one of the six people that has it. Or in theory, take, if you're facing off against someone that has a star, take it from them. Although that is one of the many questions that does come up immediately. Hey, if I am going against Steve now that has a star in an elimination and I beat him, do I have to take his or can I take someone else's steal it? And Steve's is just like up for grabs. Like what, how does this work? Or can Steve then I'm eliminated, but I get to give my star away. That's still a question, but you can only get one by winning an elimination or someone who wins an elimination and gets a star giving that star to you in that moment. If you win the daily, in a given round, then you can't have, then you, you have a star. That star cannot be stolen from you that round. So in future instances, Kara and Brad in this episode, you know, they have a star. Their star cannot be taken because they were the winners of the daily. If you win the daily, you also then have the chance to throw yourself into elimination, which brings up a couple extra questions I'll get to in a moment. And yeah, if you win an elimination, you steal a star either. From the same gender, there are three stars for the men, three stars for the women. So six people, three and three, will make the final, even though there's only one winner no matter what at the end. But if you steal from your same gender, you get to have that star for yourself. If you steal from the opposing gender, you cannot take that for yourself. You can steal it from them if you want to be an asshole and give it to someone else. So as in this episode, again, he says, Steve, if you want to take one of the three women's stars, you can, but you have to give that to a woman. And I'm guessing if you are a woman and already have a star and whether you take it then from a man or a woman, in that case, you're giving it away to someone else because you already have one. So. That's as far as I understand. Quick thoughts, and then we'll get to a couple of the questions. First thought, getting them into circulation was fantastic. Bravo for thinking that. It creates a steal situation on day one. It creates, you know, targets for all six on day one versus, and it just, and versus it taking six episodes until six of them are given out and someone's stealing. Like, it, it, this is just such, such a game changer compared to the previous times we, you know, Recently did the whole I fixed the challenge video on YouTube about my idea for the daily skull twist as a new version of the skull twist that has been tried twice before this putting them into circulation first was something I had not thought of, but is brilliant and necessary and just is a huge, huge advancement in the idea of a skull and earning your way to a final to get immediately to the portion of the game. So the whole thing is stealing and taking and all of that stuff. 
it just makes it way more way more interesting and adds it, it kind of removes a bunch of the negative externalities that came of the ones of past i do have to say my daily skull kind of got used once it's only going to get the one time but it did get used once so i I, I really love seeing that. And again, I, I had no idea that this I, was happening. I don't even think I had seen the star thing in the trailer before making that video. So love that. Six is a small enough number that it's going to be hard to keep them. And the options for stealing are going to be very limited when it's only three and three. And if you're stealing for yourself, you've got to steal from one of three, one of which might be safe, one of which might be one of your best friends in the house. It, like it just it makes a lot more drama. So that is very, very good. Here's where the questions start, though, and where this thing could unravel. We we don't know. We'll find out in episode two. I will be able to answer these. But you know, this first one, it's the last two people went into elimination. And you got to win the elimination to get a star. So like, doesn't everyone want to get last in the daily? Or are we, was this only opening daily? And from here on, it's just going to be, there's winners and they're safe in all facets and can throw themselves in and the rest of the house votes. And it's not last place goes in. Cause if it's last place goes into the elimination and everyone's battling to go into an elimination, then everyone's actively just going to quit daily challenges. And that, that that seems like that can't happen. So it seems like the last place in the daily is going to be out the window, which is also something I don't love. And so, it, it, you know, I don't know. It's it's there's a lot of questions left is what I'm saying. I think after this, it's just going to be first place is safe to steal and can put themselves in and, you know, and then last place doesn't go in. That's what I'm guessing. Here's some other questions though, when it comes to the, I win and I can throw myself in. If I throw myself in, we we don't know until someone does it what the answer is to the following questions. Do I get to pick who I go against out of these two? Let's say in this episode one, Brad didn't have a star and was like, yeah, I want to go in. I think I can beat either of these guys, whatever. I want to go in. Does he get to say, I want to go in and Tyree, you're safe. Or I want to go in and Steve, you're safe. Do Tyree and Steve draw? to see who is safe in this instance. Do the rest of the house vote on who to pull out of or keep in the elimination? How does that work? So we don't, won't know that until someone, a winner throws themselves in. We just need some answers. I think there is a version of this that could go badly, but I do think there's a version of this that could go incredibly well and they could have really advanced the skull star type of twist in a really, really positive way. And so far, the first part of putting them in circulation is a massive advancement, massive, massive win. Who does this help? Who does this hurt? It, it helps a handful of people. I don't think it necessarily like hurts a bunch of people. I think the people who are going to struggle to ever really compete that well, like the Jasmines of the world, you know, it was going to be tough, tough sled for jazz, no matter what. Now she has to win an elimination, even tougher, but whatever. So I don't think it actually really hurts anyone. The only people that might are people that already were in a bad enough spot to begin with. As far as people, it helps Brad and Cara Maria top on the board because those two are across the board beast. You can, you know, you had cam in here say this is music to an elimination queen's ears. Sure. Her and Laurel are as elimination dominant as there has been in the history of the show. But this really, I feel like helps as much as anything, folks who are across the board daily and elimination. And that's Brad and Cara because winning dailies to keep yourself safe from being stolen from, or once you're stolen from, if you're like, I need to win a daily to get back in there and get to call my shot and pick my spot. Those two who I think are heavy favorites in every daily challenge this season are in a really good spot because of this. I think Tina and Veronica maybe just got a big boost because as we said in our preview, hey, if there's a star thing going on, what if your friends can win them for you? Because that would be a boost to Tina and Veronica. And hey, what do you know? Rachel could win those. Not to say Tina and Veronica couldn't win them themselves. Obviously, they absolutely could. But I think they even, the moment they would hear this, would admit their first thought was, Fuck yeah, Rachel, go do. Yeah, Rachel, come on, girl. You got us, right? Best friends. Like, I think that one uh, confessional from Veronica of like, well, like, it's a game still, and we're great friends, and it's great to be back, but we'll see what happens. It turns into so we're rock solid, and Rachel's our leader, and Rachel's going to go get these for us. And it leads to the question of like, that conversation is going to happen, I think, for sure, going to happen. Would Rachel be the one that brings it up? Would Rachel be the one that's like, Hey, I got a skull and I just won this daily. Like, 
if it's something that looks like I could do, like I could go in there and get one for you guys. Like I could go in there and get one for you. Would she do that? If she does, she in her head think I can't do that once. I would have to either be like, I will try to do this twice or not at all. If she does it and gets and wins successfully, gets a second one. Who does she give it to first between Tina and Veronica? Fascinating questions abound, but I think Tina and Veronica got a boost that the third member of their trio is, you know, one of the best players in the game. Cam and Leroy are the last ones I think really then helps because they're the only pair that I feel 100% confident of anyone in the house, 100% if it came down to a moment at the end where it was like, hey, either the opportunity is only like Leroy's got a star, Cam does not, and it's a men's day and Leroy's like, ah, it, the opportunity's here for me to try to get one, I'll do it for you or vice versa. Cam's like, I got one, but the opportunity's right here. I'll go do it. They're the only ones I feel confident would risk their own game to go in and get one for the other person. And so by default, it does help them a little bit. So those are the people that helps overall. I like it so far, but I've got questions and I'm worried that this is going to either be the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. The, the last place in the elimination is going to really dictate a lot of things. We'll find out more after episode two. Now let's talk the daily and some of our first impressions purely on the sports side of thing on the like competition, how can they do in this competition side thing that were different than what we thought? Not first impression. I'm not going to go through all everyone, just a handful of people whose impression was different than my expectation of them going in based off this first daily start though. The daily itself. Fantastic. A plus great opening daily nailed it, nailed it, nailed it. Okay. Endurance with a slight puzzle aspect to get the opening stars is just a fantastic way to open the show in general, especially though, I think for this whole idea of like, we're getting the stars in circulation and you know, the stars are the thing that gets you to the final. So this isn't like a mini final, but it is a pure endurance play and with like the smallest puzzle element to it. I think it was the perfect choice for an open gate daily. It keeps everyone on one consolidated piece of land right next to each other, all in frame works really well to watch all 24 people go at same time, shout out the production crew. And this is one of those things where filming in the same location, a couple seasons in a row, this is the world championships location. The world championships house means that I think if this was filmed in a location, they hadn't just been in and had left over everything in, we would have been watching this in multiple heats. They would not have made 24 sets of this. That is a hell, 24 times eight, whatever the hell that is. 160 plus 30, 192 boxes, star boxes they built on that hillside. That's a lot. That's tough, okay? And so I don't think we're getting that. If they hadn't been there before, already built up some of the, you know, just had more time, more resources available to build up, have this bigger production. Love that. Individual has to be an individual game. If the individual winner at the end, the opening daily has to be individual as well. Like that. Here's a couple impressions that I thought were different than what I was expecting. The biggest one, of course, is Leroy. I had Leroy first in my power rankings without a doubt. I said this season was setting up for him. I He's my winner pick. I said it's his to lose. And he comes out in the opening endurance. It was like, okay, what, what's going on here? What's going on here? The puzzle element's there. I don't think anyone was that tripped up over the puzzle thing. This really does come down to endurance. Maybe a spot comes down to who did the puzzle faster, who got luckier with just, I picked the right star on the third box and like only had to do one trip for that one, whatever. It wasn't a good look for Leroy. I had my timeline maybe a little wrong. He's in good, don't get me wrong. He's still in very good shape. I'm, I'm not like, wow, Leroy has no chance to win. Leroy, as you'll see in the power rankings, still, still feel fine, but, uh, you know, not right now, present day, this moment, he is in the most unbelievable shape. And when he went from like a good athlete to like, I'm going to get in the most ridiculous shape of my life. I happened after the filming of this show. And I was, I was a little, I couldn't totally tell when it officially had started. And so, uh, yeah, he was definitely one that stood out in a not great way. Kefla, on the other hand, stood out. I mean, I knew, you know, the, the pictures and everything else, you're like, the muscle is still there. It's a big built dude. But like my first question of that would be like, okay, wait, he's super muscular in his fifties or whatever he is like, probably can't run probably, you know, and it turns out never mind. endurance check, check the box. So very impressed there. Avery getting second. 
I didn't, I didn't really remember. I mean, she hadn't made a final, you know, didn't have a good read on the endurance front, um, but getting to watch her compete solo and, you know, clearly again, second place to Cara Maria that's, you know, beat Rachel. So big time for her definitely exceeded expectation there. And then Nicole, Cam and Laurel, they're the last three women before the losers and the losers in this, the bottom four were exactly kind of, you know, respectfully exactly who I thought they would be. Once I saw that it was an opening, you know, run up and down this hill in the sweltering summer heat, it, it was as I thought it was going to be. So those three who, you know, I was like, okay, a little bit, little, little leery here, not way off of expectation, but like the littlest bit. And then, and uh, Adam and Brandon, confirmed what I thought without evidence. I didn't have evidence for it before. I had a little on Adam, like I've seen on Instagram, you know, the, the cycling. So I was like, there's an endurance, but I don't know is I haven't been paying attention long enough. Is that like brand new? Was that before we filmed this? Was that been your whole adult life? Like whatever. So seems like endurance is solid there. Brandon seems like is just absolutely ready to go. He was the one that kind of stood out of like, Whoa. Okay. I mean, Brandon was always athletic, but he just looked really maybe it was also that that sporty hat that he had on during it but it was just like this guy looks like someone who like this was no problem like this running up and down this hill was he was like great fantastic can we do it again type of situation so those two confirmed expectations but those expectations didn't have a lot of evidence behind them and so still felt like they stood out as for nominations alliance kind of in the elimination here, last big bucket to talk about. Pretty lame opening nomination. High hopes for the season. Obviously, how crazy it's going to get. The, the uh, no, this season on, which is essentially like the new trailer that they put at the end of episode one, looked like we're going to have some pretty wild fireworks as expected and potentially during nominations. It's going to be great. Opening one, though, sometimes can be a snooze fest. This one was a snooze fest. Uh, Tyree, if I'm Tyree, I'm a little pissed at Leroy, if anything, of like, hey, dude, I know this is on me. I was in the bottom four. I don't have connections in the house. I get it. But uh, you weren't supposed to be in the bottom four. And if we replaced you with like Jay or Ace, I feel like I would have maybe been safe if one of those two is in the bottom instead of you. So I'd maybe be a little upset at Leroy. I feel bad for Tyree. Uh, Denver, real world Denver was the last like really meaningful real world season to me in my like run of, you know, the four to five seasons where it's like the exact right age, all in really, really care about this really, really get attached to the cast. Uh, Denver was the last of those for me. And I was always rooting for him on the few seasons he was on. It seemed like here, he was finally in a place to, you know, not mentally get in his own way. He'd always been one that kind of got in his own way while also just not, you know, as we see in this episode, the endurance thing is a problem, but, uh, you know, it, it, it cost him here. It seemed like mentally he was in a way better spot. He was able to, you know, as he said, keep that temper, uh, calm down or that temper is non-existent anymore. So shout out to him for that horrible opening daily, as far as what he's good at and not good at. And then, you know, got out strategized in the elimination. So he's gone. Um, I probably would similar to TJ. I, I, I wanted to, I was glad he got the chance to do all stars and I would like to see him maybe get another chance because I think we should, we should get one more than one daily challenge worth out of it, but he's gone because Steve beat him. And first and foremost, that elimination itself elimination game was great. Really enjoyed it. I love that they dug a water pit in the center and that this wasn't in like uh, a pool, you know, propped up. They're like, no, we got the time again, back to the whole, like we've got the time and resources. Cause we've already been here. We've already set this thing up. So what can we add versus build from scratch? And it's like, well, the arena already looks amazing. Opening debt challenge. What if we, uh, dig a pit in the middle, uh, you know, have actual water versus like a pool that we bring in or anything like that, or an above ground type of situation. So really enjoyed that. The whole thing looked incredible. The arena looks incredible. Steve is one of those other people I could have said as from an impression standpoint, a little bit exceeded expectations thus far as he references, you know, it's lost the weight. He definitely took very serious. Like once he was on all stars too, it's like, Hey, if I get the chance to do this again, I want to actually be like ready in my best possible shape. So got himself in some good shape. And uh, yeah, so he's just, he's more of a threat than I previously thought. And he also, I knew he was smart. I knew he, you know, famously from back the gauntlet, 
loves puzzles, big, big puzzle guy. Puzzles were his friends growing up. I still always love those confessionals from him back then before he lost a Trichelle in the five piece Tangram puzzle. Um, but I, you know, did he cheat? I, I'm just going to say it. Did he cheat? And the answer is no, he did not cheat. He played within the rules, but he did. This was a very, you know, he, he vaults himself and we'll talk about it in the power rankings here too into a level of gameplay with, uh, you know, Jordan is maybe the best example of this. A bananas is up there as well. Um, and, and many other real vets of the game who like, I'm going to outthink this. I've done, I've done this enough, or I'm just smart enough. And I know my strength is strategy and creativity here. And I'm going to outthink this. Did you, you didn't say this wasn't allowed. You didn't, you said this was, uh, this wasn't allowed, but this variation of that, you didn't, you didn't say, so like, could I do it? And if I do, what's the worst you're going to do? Like, maybe stop, tell me I can't do that. What are you going to do? And so he hides the balls as he says, you know, he just kind of puts them in the corner or whatever. And it's like, no, like he hides them. It seems like he legitimately, cause that last one he gets seems to have come from underwater. It seems like he like dug out a little hole in the side or whatever and stuffed the ball in it, something of that nature. It's smart. It's strategic. If I'm Tyree, I'm a little salty about it. I feel like it was, you know, in the gray area, but the gray area is a place you should explore in the challenge, especially in elimination with your game on the line. So tip of the hat to him for that. And there is a little bit of a hint of like a villain esque edit for Steve between like making it like, Oh yeah, he was kind of in the gray area here. He does the tip of the hat like to Tyree at the end when he gets out with the last one before he puts it in, kind of goes to turns back and respectfully, but also like eh, there isn't a version of that that's 100% respectful or, you know, 100% not disrespectful. Um, and then, you know, takes it from Brandon. And instead of explaining the easy way of like, well, Brandon, I can only pick between, I want a star. So I'm picking a man, one of the men's safe. And between you and Adam, I literally did road rules and a season of the challenge with Adam 25 years ago. So or 20 years ago, whatever it was. So sorry, man, it, it, you're, I literally don't have any other pick except for you. And he could have done that. Instead, he just says, I'm going to take yours. And if you want to come back and get it, go ahead. And it's just kind of like the littlest bit of like, Steve could be like a little villain esque in this. And I would love that. I find Steve to be very entertaining. I really enjoy Steve. And I would really enjoy if Steve leaned in a little bit of like, I'm just going to kind of be a little bit of a dick. Like I'm just like the littlest bit, the tiniest, I'm going to be everyone's friend, but also just like the littlest things like the hat tip or the way he says that to Brandon. I think it's going to be great. So shout out to Steve. I'm glad he won and the elimination looked great. was a great game. And now we hand out some awards. Best quote is up first. And this is where we go back to like, they got to the game way too soon. There should have been more time. There, there wasn't that many good quotes in the first episode. Let's be honest. There just wasn't. Um, there was, there was at least one that was a deserving winner, um, which I will say last. The other two I decided to give nominations to is I did like Jasmine during the like Leroy Jasmine Kiefla toast that started things at the house. Jasmine's welcome to my divorce party. That was really good. Really funny. Really thought that was cool. And then car Maria, Yes, I did hear it at the end. She tried to work in, I've got a bigger Stargate on my back, aka Star and Target together. And then I don't, I don't know if it was just great editing, uh, but you know, the, the person behind the camera, the producer doesn't react to it, doesn't laugh. I myself at home didn't laugh at first. And it seemed like Kara like realizes like, maybe that's not going to go over. And it, it felt like it was a very in-person moment where there was an actual live audience that didn't react. And she just kind of kept going with it. I found the whole moment funny and endearing. So those two are nominated, but the winner is Flora who said, quote, looking at these competitors, I don't know any of them, but I already shit myself three times End quote really great. And here's what I've got to say about Flora, who was definitely probably the number one on the list of like, I don't know why this person's here. Because uh, as I said, in the preseason, you know, she had done one season, she wasn't even there that long. She was a real world star, um, you know, was beloved from real world Miami with 24, three years ago, whenever that was. But, uh, you know, just didn't didn't fit the bill of challenge all star, you know, having done one season and barely been on it. But man, <laughs> 
I didn't know because I wasn't, it's classic. I wasn't familiar with your game situation. Flora may be between her like two or three confessionals and two or three like moments on screen said 50. Let's say she said 50 words total in this episode. I think 20 of them were curse words. I think fuck was in every sentence and even mo- her, both of her confessionals were like, I'm um, talking about my daughter and like wanting to prove myself to her or her telling me like, don't F it, F it up. And it was still like a bunch of F bombs and curses, everything. Floor is fantastic. Keep her around just for the commentary and just for the cursing. It's fantastic. Love a sailor mouth. Best moment of the episode. Chronological order nominees here. TJ riding in on the BMX bike. Unbelievable. And also just the opening in the vineyard, them like walking through the vineyard, really great setting choice for this opening. Loved it. Loved TJ riding in on the bike. Leroy Jasmine and Kifla's toast combined kind of toast. Uh, Kifla is the real toast at the end. Jasmine kind of started to raise the glass. So those seem to actually be a part of the same thing. Leroy's was in the same circle. Wasn't as much of a toast. Just saying like, yeah, I retired and too bad for y'all. I'm back. Uh, got a kid now. Kind of got to take care of that. Uh, third nominee. The, the group explaining to Adam that they're not called missions. They're called daily challenges and shout out. Ver- it was either Veronica or Tina. I think it was Veronica who says they're called daily challenges and getting the word daily in there. I want to know if someone then asked, what, what what do you mean daily? Do we do it every single day? And then they would explain, well, once upon a time we did, and then we didn't, but we still call them that because we do hear Adam say the whole thing's called the challenge. What do you mean? That moment for someone like me, who's super nerdy about this stuff and loves the like funny anecdotes of how we ended up calling things what and very picky when I did my rewatch series of like, they call them mission in the beginning, but I called them the daily challenge when I rewatched the whole thing. That was great. Kara winning the first daily felt really, really uh, kind of special little moment of like, oh yeah, she's back. She's back. And it's so great. Her winning the first one. And then Steve's combo hat tip to Tyree, mild call out of Brandon for no real reason. All that's great. Explaining challenge, not mission to Adam is my choice for the best moment. Best strategy. Not always going to give this uh, award out, but when there are strategy things to call out on the positive or sometimes maybe even negative, I will give out the award. And in this one, there was actually a couple pieces of good strategy. First one, Cam opening the nominations strong. Just like, how about we don't throw in Leroy? Everyone good with that? Okay, cool. No one wants to speak at the first one of these. No one. And she knows that. And she knows if there is one where I can get away with just being like, how about we, uh, how about we save the person I want everyone to save, even though he's a threat to all of your games. She knows she can do that at the first one. She can strong arm her way through this one when no one else wants to talk. She does exactly that. I like it. And it worked. Second one then also speaking of cam kind of in reverse here, Ayana pumping up cam. We get to see the conversation behind between them. It's fantastic. And I will say it is hundred percent genuine. This, I absolutely feel like this is just Ayana's feelings coming in and being like, Cam, I love you immediately. I'm like, I don't know you, but I'm proud of you. I think you're the best. Everything like it's all very, very genuine, but it's also all super smart gameplay to see the two people, most popular people in the house are this couple. Everyone loves them. Everyone always has, always will love them. They're probably going to have some power and influence in the house. And you just immediately like, I don't know you, but we should be best friends. And you should know that I think the world of you. And now we're going to be tight. How does that sound? Sounds good. Okay, great. And now I'm in. So that was good from her, whether it was strategic or not, because it was genuine. I believe that whether there was any strategy part to it or not, or if just, you know, blind luck that the strategy goes with the genuine appreciation. Either way, it's a boost for her game. And then the third and final nominee, Steve hiding the balls. Again, it's in the gray area, but uh, it's, it's they didn't say you couldn't, and they didn't stop him and tell him he shouldn't, and it worked, and it got him the elimination win. So I that you know, I'm gonna I'm, this award's a little more for like big game, long term strategy, not just necessarily winning a specific elimination or daily. So I'm going to go with Cam, knowing first dominations, this is a safe move to play, and we can just get this over with. No one has to be nervous, and does it. That's fantastic. Episode MVP. TJ was fantastic. Uh, he's got to just be shouted out. Flora again. That was totally unexpectedly great. Can't wait for as many confessionals as possible from Flora. Adam uh, definitely got as much screen time as anyone between, you know, got his one 
the everyone gets their where are they now type of you know 60 seconds but then he got his you know well he was one of the six star getters so we get to talk to him and have another confessional and then his one one of his main connections in the house would be steve because of the road rules in gauntlet passed and so steve going in led to an extra little confessional so he ended up with a good amount of screen time and i enjoyed all of it Leroy and Cam definitely were, you know, as front and center as anyone in this very, you know, uh, you know, ensemble episode here. Car Maria probably comes in second, but the winner, the MVP of the episode has got to be Steve. I mean, he was probably the most present. I don't know. Confessional counts or anything. He was way up there, you know, obviously in the elimination, um, but between, you know, going out and doing the hand modeling of the stars and, uh, you know, having his, where are they now then leading into being a focal part, obviously of the back half of the episode going into the elimination and winning Steve is your MVP. Now, finally, let's talk power rankings. Now coming into the season, we did preseason power rankings. Those were as follows. We had on the men's side going into the season, Leroy, Brad, a gap, Tony, Adam, Brandon, and on the women's side, Cara, Rachel, Laurel, Cam, and Janelle. That was preseason. Let's talk, have those updated. Let's start with the women. And because they made it clear there's three men and three women that'll be in the final, even if there's only one winner, no matter what, I'm going to keep the power rankings for, for the time being, first half, maybe even all the way through the season up until the final separate because equal amounts uh, will make the final. So these are a little more geared towards making the final with a hint of winning it over the course of the season. As always, it'll become more and more who's actually going to just win this thing versus get to the final. Let's talk women first. There's now, there was a gap on the men's side before that's closed. There's a gap that has opened on the women's side though. Car Marie is number one for sure. Rachel remains number two. But it does, it is worth mentioning if she gets convinced or feels like she just should anyways go in more than once to try to get more than one star to help her friends out. She's, she's awesome. I would expect her to win any pretty, basically any elimination she goes in, but you just, you still just don't want to be in too many eliminations that you don't need to be in. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I she's gotta be mentioned, but she is number two. And then there's a gap. I think Cara and Rachel, and then there's kind of a gap now on the women's side for me. I've got Avery in third off the strong opening performance. I've got Janelle in fourth and I've got Laurel in fifth. Laurel drops, stays in the top five, pure respect for the physical abilities, but it's going to be a mess. Her endurance didn't, you know, look great in the opening one. So as far as like winning the final, that took a hit and just getting there and just surviving this house in general, it just looks like it's going to be a mess. So you know, it's, it's going to be tough for Laurel, but I do think, you know, she, her physical ability, she's got to remain fifth. And then cam fell out of the list. You know, it just, she was questioning her abilities a little bit. And I just felt like Avery and Janelle, I wanted to keep Janelle in there and Avery, you know, I don't know. I basically I wanted to change, to change the list a little bit, but I just think Cara, Rachel one, two, and then there might be a gap um, between them in the rest of the house on the men's side. That gap is gone. The top two have flipped. Brad's number one. He probably should have been there from the beginning. I, I might've been mistaken as far as saying this was Leroy's to lose. I was probably just ignoring the fact that this is really Brad's to lose. Um, he's been, you know, in these, he just got, came off the second place. He's ready. He's as motivated as anyone could ever be. And it does, it, it, as far as them kind of clearing out a lot of the male heavy hitters, big, big, big names from a competition standpoint, in leaving Brad there as much as that. Yes. Does set up nicely for a Leroy or a Tony coming back into the game. I think it sets up as nicely for anyone as Brad. And I think he might, he might end up dominating. So he's gotta be number one. Leroy stays at number two. I'm not questioning anything after the, the bottom four finish, but I'm also not, not questioning anything. It, 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 it was the most shocking result. Certainly we talked about it before. Brandon's in third. I considered him putting him in second. Again, looks ready to go, looks motivated. I'm very excited to see how this goes for him. I got Adam in fourth and Steve in fifth. And, you know, Adam was there before. I now have some of the evidence on the endurance side. And I just think so far, like he might, the old, the, the older players in the game might have more connections than I gave credit to going in. I hadn't like fully thought through like, oh yeah, like Adam, Steve and the Mean Girls trio all did the gauntlet together. And like have that little bit of a connection. 
And, you know, if we know Adam eventually is going to have a romance with someone in this house um, that he did not come into the house with a connection with, but we'll leave it with a connection with, like, that's another person and could tie him into the younger crew. So I think he's in a really good spot. I think Steve showed he's smart and knows, you know, does the thing where, like, I'm going to try to figure out how to play these games, is willing to go in the gray area, the whole thing. It's a useful skill when it comes to the silliness of some of these games they play. So he slides into the top five, but I do feel like Brad in my, I, I just, I feel silly that I didn't even have him first to begin with. Um, and I almost feel silly that I didn't pick him to win. And I don't know that I would change that pick right now, but I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm not going to change anything. Cause I, I don't, I don't get to change my pick. My pick was my pick. It's Leroy. I'm still rooting for Leroy certainly too, while also having picked him. Um, but I, I, I'm feeling a little silly that I didn't think Brad should be the clear favorite on the men's side, the way Cara Maria is on the women's side. So Cara, Rachel, Gap, Avery, Janelle, Laurel on the women's side, Brad, Leroy, Brandon, Adam, Steve on the men's side. That's your power rankings. That's episode one. And you know what the best part of all of this is? We just get to end this and then edit it and post it and all that stuff. And then watch episode two. So thank you for stop tuning in. Thank you. Hopefully you've all, I don't know, maybe you've already watched both episodes and now are listening to both recaps. Uh, the episode two recap will be out shortly after the episode one. So unless you're listening to this within the first few hours it's posted, you should be able to go right into episode two's recap as well. As always, rate, review, follow, subscribe, all of those good things. They are very much appreciated. Comment below anything if you're watching on YouTube. Thank you. I love you. And I will talk to you very, very soon for All Stars 4 episode number two.